that's a bit more technical. So yeah. for the technical people in the audience, yeah. a transformer has a very long window where it can see, it has layers of representation where an ambiguous, let's suppose it did words, not fragments, because it's easier to talk about. So an ambiguous word comes in like may, and initially it's going to have a vector that represents the meaning of may and hedges its bets between a modal and a month and a woman's name. And then as you go up through the net, this vector gets refined by contextual interactions. Um, so if you see June and October in, nearby, it's going to turn into a month. And if you see Mary and Elizabeth nearby, it's going to turn into a woman's name and so on. Um, now, it has a very long context of like thousands of words, which is very unlike us, apparently. Um, so it seems very hard to see how the brain could do that. Um, it also has what attention means is that, okay, I'm a word, like I'm the, I'm the vector for the word may, and I want to, in the next layer, I want to get a better version of myself that fits the context better. So what I do is I look round at other vectors, um, and I don't give them all equal weight. I'm looking for other vectors to give me a lot of information about how I should change myself. And I don't do that directly by comparing myself with the other vectors. I make up a query and send it out and see if it matches a key. And that's a bit complicated. But the point about attention is I'm focusing on particular bits of my context. And it's a big context I can see. And that looks very unlike what people can do. Um, but actually, it's not. So you can do something quite like that by using what's called fast. This is just a technical digression. It only go on for a couple of minutes. <laughs> um, if what you do is you take um, two vectors and you associate them, um, and then you add together these associations of vectors, and then you use that as your contextual information, this, this temporary matrix of weights, so those are called fast weights, that contains all these associations, then you can hit that temporary associated memory with the current vector, and it'll give you back all the other a mix of all the other vectors, but each of them weighted by how similar it is to the current vector. So you can actually use fast weights to have an attentional memory. Um, and the linear version of that people program, and it doesn't work as well as transformers, but it works much better than not having fast weights. So I believe the brain can do something quite like that, but it won't do it by storing vectors of neural activity like transformers do it. It'll do it by having temporary modifications to weights that achieve more or less the same thing. Um, I, do did that relate that, to your question? Yeah, I mean, how do you think that could ever be shown if it is? Oh, you works? make models and show that it works. Yeah. And then once you've shown that it works, you look around in the brain and see if you can find the fast ways. And it turns out um, we have this silly model that there's only two timescales in most neural nets. So there's the timescale of the neural activities, and they change for each training case. And then there's the timescale of the weights, the synapse strengths, connection strengths, whatever you want to call it, the parameters, and they change very slowly, just two timescales. And in transformers, you get your short-term memory, which is a very long short-term memory, by remembering the vectors that will correspond to neural activities for like 30,000 fragments, or no, 3,000 fragments. Um, but you can get that kind of memory by having a different time scale for weights, have weights that change much faster than the slow weights that are the long-term knowledge, but much slower than the um, neural activities. So, for example, one more minute on this, um, <laughs> and then I'll be done. If you're trying to listen to words in noise, and there's a lot of noise, so you can only just hear the word. Um, if, suppose the word was cucumber, and you're trying to hear this word. If someone said cucumber to you several minutes ago, you're going to be better at hearing the word cucumber in noise. And now the question is, where is that knowledge? Is it that there's a cucumber neuron that's sitting there being active? Um, or if you believe cucumbers are a vector of activity in a bunch of neurons, do you have a whole bunch of neurons that are sitting there being active to represent cucumber? And in the meantime, you're trying to deal with other words. 
So you have to have many, many copies of these neurons. That's crazy. The brain doesn't want that. Almost certainly your knowledge of the effect of cucumber a few minutes ago is to change fast weights, and those fast weights make it easier for you to hear cucumber in your So there's lots and lots of evidence in the brain and lots and lots of computational necessity to have more than two timescales. And we probably have many timescales, um, but that's hardly been explored. And the reason it hasn't been explored is to do with the hardware we've got. So if you just have one timescale for weights, you can take a whole bunch of training cases times a matrix of weights. So your matrix of training cases times a matrix of weights and do a matrix matrix multiply, which is very efficient. But if you have fast weights and you change them as you're processing a sentence, then you can't get a matrix matrix multiply. It all has to be vector matrix multiplies. Now, there's new hardware that might be better to doing vector matrix multiplies, like the graph core chip. Um, that may change this, but basically people can't do research on fast rates because of the hardware we've got. So, sorry, that was a technical. Yeah. I felt the need to. I felt the, the need to make it clear. I do know some technical stuff as well, <laughs> as well as not having a clue what to do about any of these political or alignment problems. Thank you.